G'day folks and welcome back to the channel for part 14 of my Beginner's Primal Strike Elementalist playthrough where we have just hit level 65 which means we have some gear changes to make um, also we have just hit level 65 so let's go ahead and spend some points and I think the points are probably going to go let me just double check yep we finished Thermite Mine so the points could go in Blast Shield um, Pierce and Elemental Res is of always good. We could also put some more into Vindictive Flame, Total Speed, more regen, good stuff. Olzorn's Wrath, I'm pretty happy with this at 10, um, but more is obviously better. Um, and then over here in Shaman, we could put some more into Storm Surge. Um, being that this is mostly electrocute damage over three seconds, adding more to this will just have it overriding itself. So yes, it is still good, um, but if you're doing spam primal strike, you probably don't need to put heaps of points into this, which kind of just leaves the, um, the Mog Dragon's pack line. I guess we could actually put some more points in brute force. So this is more health, more flat lightning damage. This is actually probably the go. Um, but I like this as well, so it's kind of hard. <laughs> At this point, you're more or less just topping these up and we'll be done with skill points probably before level 90. Um, let's get more health. This is health and lightning damage. We'll go this one first, max out brute force. Don't put points in these. Uh, you actually can't trigger these with primal strike. So feral hunger here needs a default weapon attack, which primal strike is not. So you could use savagery, you could use um, fire strike, but primal strike does not work with these. And then upheaval, requires a um, a crit. Uh, I think this one is the crit one. Uh, da, da, da. Whenever you land a critical strike, yep. So this requires a crit and also requires a default weapon attack. So this will just never trigger with primal strike. So these are no good. Uh, this one, however, is good. Flat lightning damage, bunch of health, good stuff. Um, Mogdragon's packed line, also quite good. And honestly, I probably should put some more points in these, in uh, in this rather because eventually this is going to trigger and I want it to be mildly useful when it does. Um, however, for now, I think we'll max out Brute Force, then we'll probably put a couple more points in this. I think it's either 10 or 11 is the kind of the sweet spot for this. Uh, it's the first point at which you get 5% all, or maximum all res, is kind of the sweet spot, so I'll probably bring it up to that. I think it's 10. And then we'll probably put more in here. Um, oak skin, good for armor, good for resistances, heart of the wild, good for health, um, also has regen, okay, I wasn't thinking about that, mostly you get this for the health, and then uh, Mogdragon's Pact, a lot of that physical damage is going to be converted into lightning damage, um, but also just health and energy regen is, is good to have, so that is that option. Alright, uh, we also have some skill points, or some attrib attribute points rather. Words are hard. So I'm going to put that in Cunning, just get a little bit more offensive ability. You can see with Veloth there, we actually have a pretty good chance to miss, even though I'm pretty sure we'll stomp her into the ground fairly easily. Uh, hitting all of our attacks is definitely something that I want to do. Okay, like I said, I have some gear to swap, so I'm just going to go ahead and swap it. Uh, we've swapped out the Stonehide Raider Greaves of the Void for these Stone Treaders. The Stone Treaders have a... Um, uh, a chance to activate. Where is it? Is it a buff? Is it a buff? Ah, seem, seemed like it was a buff. Granted skills, 100% uh, chance to activate. So basically, looks like you just get hit, and then every 20 seconds when you get hit, you get a physical and piercing absorption shield and some extra armor. So pretty good stuff. I wonder how long that lasts. I think maybe the armor is active as long as the shield is active. So that's pretty good. And then we swapped out the chest and the helmet for the Perdition pieces, the Empowered Perdition pieces. Basically just for that 10% increased armor. And you'll notice here, 1403, we basically just got 40% more armor. I mean, it's averaged over the entire set. If we get hit in the shoulders, it's going to hurt, but everywhere else we uh, should be pretty good. Okay, let's just get our absorption back up and... I was going to put a runestone in the helmet, but I don't think I need this anymore. Uh, 
originally I was planning on using these pants as well, in which case um, I would have needed some aether, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to use those anymore. I'm just going to leave the old ones in there. And the Anchorite's leg armor, I actually think I'm going to sell all this stuff. Um, I'm definitely not using these gloves anymore. Um, I can't remember why I kept those. I think I wanted the resistances for something at some point. But uh, I don't need this. And what I do need is to go shopping. Um, let's get my components back. Uh, or in the case of the chest. Do I want the chest or the scaled hide? I don't think it really matters. Um, yeah, we'll just keep the add-ons. That's fine. I definitely want to keep this sanctified bone. Um, and you know what? I kind of don't care about the Mark of the Traveler. See, we're, we're already capped on run speed and 5% over. So the run speed on this component does nothing. And at that point, it's just a little bit of health regen. And do I need slow res? I kind of do. I will chuck it on. We got tons of them. So if worse comes to worse, I'll just melt the Mark of the Traveler and it'll be fine. These two I'm going to actually chuck back in the stash. And the Ventral Wraith, I actually created or crafted this because there is a Devotion Shrine coming up that I will need to use that on. So you will need to craft a Vengeful Wraith as well. That can just go back in the stash though. Alright, um, like I said, there is one more thing I need to do and that is to go shopping. I'm never going to get the third piece of that set. Um... And also turn some quests in, but we need to go back to normal to go shopping. Because we're going shopping in the ancient grove. Um, let's go talk to Barnabas here. We'll get our extra bag, which I think we're already full on bags. Uh, yep, no extra bag. Okay, uh, I'm going to exit to the main menu and I'm going to go back to Veteran. And we are going to head into the Ancient Grove. Now I will check before we head out that way. Because I think I need... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, Coven. Pretty sure that I have a skeleton key. If I don't, Mogdrogan's probably got one standing at the door for me. There it is. So I will take that. And we're going to go for a bit of a run. Um, I could actually... The outside, everything is in place. Okay, we're going to do this as well. I had actually forgotten about this. Uh, let's go. So this is one of the quests for the Coven that um, we didn't have enough reputation to get when we were actually in this part of the game. And since then we have actually picked up enough reputation that they will now give me the quest. I'm going to turn the loot off so I can see what's going on. And we're just waiting on the big snake. There he is. So the big snake comes out and we'll just beat him down. There we go. Thank you, mother, for the rabbits. And what do we get? Crimson Briar Band. Oh, well, that's going to get sold. And uh, we are done now. I don't think she has any additional quests. So we can go ahead and sell these. Right, um, we're heading to the Ancient Grove, which is all the way over here. And I'll be... I think I already accepted Mogdrogan's quest. But just in case I didn't, I will be accepting his quest, taking his skeleton key, if that's not already it. I think it is. Um, and from there, we will actually be going into the Ancient Grove. Now, I'm not going to fight Goggle Balls, and I'm not going to actually finish the dungeon. But... Um, we are going to go sort of clear out the first floor because there is a merchant on the first floor and the way you reset his inventory if you need to do some shopping is you um, you go to the second floor, you count to 10, and then you come back. So we'll have to do a little bit of clearing the area out. Um, there is a pretty good chance that we could just get the blueprint that I want on the first try. I think I'm up to three in a row where I just walk in and the very first time I open the inventory he has the prismatic diamond blueprint which is what we're here for. So I'm hoping that happens. Um, but we'll see is the answer I guess. Um, yep. 
No, you know what? I'm not interested in your quest. I'm not going to kill Gargle Balls. We did just hit uh, 66, so let's go ahead and get a little bit more health, a little bit more lightning damage, and I'm going to keep pumping Cunning. Uh, I'll probably put 10 points in there. doesn't really, really matter. We can get offensive ability from other sources, um, but we're kind of tanky already, and more physique is it's nice, I guess. We're standing in a uh, in a you can't hit me pool there. As long as we're in the area, also I'm going to come up here and grab the devotion shrine. Um, I probably shouldn't be killing beasts if I can avoid it, because uh, Cooper Cabra is a thing, and I'm already kind of a little bit worried that I'm going to run into him in uh, in the Ugden Bog. Uh, let's go ahead and spend this. Basically, all I'm getting now is the crab here. So this is elemental stuff. Um, and then the Arcane Barrier is really, really good. Uh, it starts off kind of sucky at uh, at low skill points. But it is actually really, really good shield. Alright, we'll pick these up, why not? And then there's also just here, I think it is. Yep, we've got a Hidden Spoils here. It's the first time they've actually had a like a door door there as well. Did just say that I shouldn't be killing those. <laughs> Alright, we'll move up the top here. We do have to kill... Uh, it's not Slathsar, it's... I can't remember his name. There's a guy standing in front of the doorway. We'll have to kill him before we can use the skeleton key. Um, but he won't be too much of an issue. Just get a couple of whirly boys out. And we'll go kill him. Ragaroth, that's his name. You would think by now I would remember it, but uh, you'd be wrong. Alright, there he goes. And again, I shouldn't be standing in goop. I think that goop is mostly mine. But I also should have dodged that, and I didn't, so... Bad play, bad play. Okay, once you use this door, you cannot leave, you cannot do anything else. If you do, this door will close, and you will not be able to get back in. You'll have to exit to the main menu, you'll have to fight your way back here, and you will have to spend another key to open the door again. So once you're in here, stay in here until you have the blueprint. Speaking of the blueprint, um, basically we want to head up and a little bit to the left, sort of, if we're looking at compass directions, we want, um, we want north, northwest. So mostly north, but a little bit of west. That'll sell nicely. It's actually pretty useless as far as items go. Um, can the albino manticore spawn in normal? I don't think it can, but I'm not sure. I know it can't drop the uh, the blueprint in normal. But, well, actually, I don't know that. I shouldn't say I know it when I don't. Anyway, um, here's our merchant. This is Vinylton, selling all natural wares. Um, I'm hoping he's just going to give me what I came for, and I won't have to reset him. I like all of the Skeleton Key dungeons. Uh, all of them have a merchant, and they all sell monster and frequent items. So this one sells Bargol's Heart and Bargol's Core. Got some colorful guns there. Has the Inquisitor and Soldier Belts, as well as Leafmane Horns and Leafmane Trophies. And then he has a bunch of rings and... And uh, this one, oh, it's not here. It is here. Okay. I'm up to four in a row now where I've come here and the prismatic diamond recipe has just been sitting on the first page and I don't have to reset this. So I'm starting to think that it's just always here. Uh, let's have a look what else we got here. Mark of Divinity, that's actually, well, it's very expensive, but Chaos and Elemental. It's a lot of elemental. Can I afford the chaos? I don't think I can. But this is actually a pretty good, a pretty good amulet for, for what we do. Um, Seventy-five. Can't use it yet. Ugden juice is also really good um, for the regen. All of this stuff can drop from treasure troves. All of this can drop from totems. So I'm not super stressed out about getting it. This one's fire based, but it does have plus one demolitionist on a helmet, which is not bad. 
Though having said that, we could just go get the fat and mask as well. Um, not really interested in that. So, not that one, this one. I am kind of interested in this. Uh, three to flame touched uh, was not really something we're using at the moment, but plus two to all zones chosen. At the very least, I could take two points out of that to keep it at 10 and then move those somewhere else. Um, it is quite expensive, but we do have a lot of bits. I think I'm going to buy that. Um, if you don't have this, don't stress about it. Um, I'll show you how to reset it, so if you want it, you can get it. Uh, speaking of resetting... Alright, so to reset it, you have to go to another area and then come back. You can't leave, so um, you have to just go to the next floor. Do be careful, at the top of this area here, you'll find stone golems. Now, I just ate one of the rocks that he threw at me, and it kind of chunked my health bar, and it wasn't an issue. Um, but, just be aware that if you get a pack of five of them, and they all throw their rocks at the same time, uh, they can just straight up kill you. So all the regen in the world is not going to help you if you instantly go 100 to 0. Alright, so golems in this little section here are something you need to worry about directly above Vinylton. And then all we do is we go across the top here. And you can fight this or not, it actually doesn't matter. Once you get up here, we just go down to the next area. And then like all of the merchants that you're ever going to want to reset, you just sit here, just wait. Count to ten, you know, one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, nine, eight, ten. Easy. Use your fingers if you have to. You know, I'm not good at numbers, so whatever. Just get it's it's not even exactly ten seconds, it's just roughly. And err on the side of caution, maybe go to eleven even. Because if you only go to seven or whatever and it's not quite long enough. And you run all the way back, and it's the same stuff again. You're going to have to run all the way back. Um, back up here, down to the next level. Wait the 10 seconds again. Hope that you've waited long enough, etc, etc. You get the idea. Um, and as you can see, all this is reset. Uh, last time he had three guns, now he's got seven. Let's see what blueprints he has. Don't go nuts buying these blueprints either. You'll notice these are 75,000 each. Um... I can get maybe 15 or 20. There's way more than that in here. So just, um, I mean, if you find something that's really good for the build, go ahead and buy it. Like this Altos's hood. I mean, I could buy this, craft five of them, and then flip the sets. So, um, actually, I probably should do that. I really should do that, but also, I really don't want to do that. Um, Ugden Salve is definitely worth buying. Elixir of the Drangle is okay, but the Ugden Salve... Um, yeah, we'll buy that. You know what, I'm going to buy the Altos one as well. I know I said don't go nuts, but that's all I'm going to buy. Alright, um, with that done, let's head back to Ultimate. And I don't know if I actually have the components needed to craft the Prismatic Diamond. But if I do, I'm going to make one and I'm going to stuff it into my helmet. So let's actually go ahead and eat all of these. And then we go uh, P-R-I-S-M, Prism, Arcane Spark, Wrathstone I know I've got. So we'll make one of those. Arcane Spark, I think it's going to be these guys. It's definitely not. Alright, so I don't have that. Uh, what? What else do I need for it? Prismatic Diamond. Oh, it's Aether Shards. Okay, and then a Radiant Gem. Yep, I need a Rigid Shell and a Dense Fur. Rigid Shell. And then Radiant Gem. There we go. Alright, we're going to have to go back to normal, unfortunately. And I'm just visiting shops, so I'm not even going to bother setting this to veteran. It's an extra click. <laughs> I'm not planning on killing anything. Uh, right. Since we're here. 
That was that one. See anything you like? Arcane Spark. Nope. That's fine. I think it's going to be the Rovers. I'm probably wrong, but I'm going to check the Rovers. My second guess is going to be um, Black Legion. Third guess is Homestead. I'm probably wrong. Um, so Arcane, it's definitely not these guys. Pretty sure it's going to be somewhere in Homestead. So I'll check the Kaimans as well. It might be them. Okay, it's not Kaiman. This would be much easier if I just looked it up. But it's also much less fun. Alright. It's it's almost got to be the Black Legion now. There it is. Arcane Spark. Okay. Let's go ahead and make one of those. There it is. Uh, okay, so that was that was I had a feeling that I was not going to be able to craft that. And uh, turns out I was right, but it wasn't the item I thought it was going to be that was going to make it so I couldn't craft it. But uh, that's fine. We'll get a few more of those. Um, I really should go do it now. All right, I'll put it on veteran. We'll go get a few of those now. So normal veteran. This is going to be the best place to farm Chthonic Seals. Now, what you can do, you can run through from the Blood Grove here all the way up through the village and into the Dark Vale Gate. But the best place is actually in the Astakhan Valley here. Because just here are some Aether Crystals. We're not here for those. I just like getting them whenever I can. All right, there we go. The best place to get Chthonic Seals of Binding is right here. So these guys, I mean, two of them before I even walk, three of them before I even walk in the door. That that doesn't normally happen. <laughs> Don't expect that. Usually you get zero or one coming in the door. But a lot of these guys are summoners. A lot of them are um, fanatics or whatever they're called. Yellow names. Here you go, summoner. Anything with a yellow name has a pretty good chance to drop one. And if you just clear this area out, um, the bottom half that is Chthonics, usually you'll come away with between 5 and 10 for a full clear of the Chthonic half. And even on Veteran, even with these things being level 67, everything dies in one hit. So it's an easy farm. And you get a lot out of it too. Not to mention the Barrow Home reputation. Though to be fair, we are basically just here for the uh, here for the seals. Okay, you'll see here we've got ghouls. If you run into ghouls, you've gone too far. Head back southeast. Anyone with a yellow name, like I said, we want to be killing them because they are pretty good chance to have the. Whoop, there's some nice. Iron bits. Pick that up as well. Yeah, anyone with a yellow name, just murder them. And anyone without a yellow name, probably just murder them as well. Since they're in here, they're probably enemies. Usually I've got a couple by this stage, so I guess they're making up for the luck outside with some less good luck inside. Um... You don't have to do the totem. I actually had forgotten that there was one in here. I usually just come in and grab whatever seals I need and then I'm on my way. But, uh, well, I mean, it'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? What do we get there? We've got the Avenger Relic. Yep. Picked up the Blood Orb of Cthon and the Tome of Atonement. This guy looks like he's got one. He doesn't. His friend did. Um, what did I need? It was uh, seven, wasn't it? I think it was seven. There's five. I think we're up to five in the inventory. And I'm pretty sure I needed seven. But we'll, I'll finish clearing this out and then I'll go and have a look. Um, 
Don't forget to go under the bridge here and grab your free loot. Two chests down here. Um, don't bother going over these bridges here. So this is kind of the halfway point. Over here is undead and ghouls and stuff. And then over this side is um, Thonix. Though having said that, there is a boss over here. And he has a metal that comes with chaos resistance built in. Which is basically the only reason I'm using the metal I have at the moment. So if I can kill him, I may have an upgrade for my metal. Here he is. So Harvel, the Earthshaker, down he goes. Grab that. I'm not interested at all in the rest of them. Um, where are we? Here we go. So this one has... looks like crap, honestly. Yeah, no. Um, it's a chance. You roll the dice and uh, you take what you get. Unfortunately, no good. That's alright, we'll head back over this side. Um, kind of have a feeling that I had 7 and I need 12. So I think I may actually be done, but I think we're almost done with the last group anyway. Alright, yeah, we're done. All right, back to Homestead. Let's see if I have enough now. We're starting to get into the uh, the more fancy slash expensive components, but Prismatic Diamond is the best hardcore head component in the game. So, definitely want to have it. Arcane Spark, I've got 10. Okay. We need to go again. That's alright. Like I said, it's the best component. You'll use this all the way to level 100. You'll use it in your final build. It's absolutely, absolutely worth couple of minutes killing Chthonics. And, you know, as a bonus, you get some Aether Crystals. Don't really, ooh. This guy's made out of reputation. Let's go kill him. Leave his junk on the floor, though. What are we up to for bits? I actually spent a decent amount on blueprints. Probably about 300,000. I only bought four blueprints, and uh, I spent 20% of my total money. You definitely only need the Prismatic Diamond blueprint, that is for sure. But if you want to spend the time shopping for the Altos set, it's only the level 74 set. Okay, this is not the level 94 version. You will have to farm that once you get to level 100, even if you make this one. So just keep that in mind. You're not taking any shortcuts, you're just going to be a little more powerful between sort of 75 and probably 90 odd. Also keep in mind, if you do buy a set like that and you put in the time and components and stuff to actually make the full set from that one blueprint, um, it's going to be very hard for you to take it off. So that's something to keep in mind as well. There's one seal of binding. Just need one more, I think. Lots of Bloodsworn Codexes and guns and all the rest of it. Or Codices, I think is the correct word. Whatever, I'm saying Codexes. Grammar police can come and arrest me. Alright, I think we're pretty much done here. I definitely have enough, but I kind of want, you know, one or two extras if I can. Not the end of the world, but there are some quests that need them. Alright, I'll kill this guy and then we're going back to ultimate. I never said which guy this guy was, it was him. <laughs> Alright, back to ultimate. Let's make our prismatic diamond and we'll get some progress in this episode, I promise. Though in my defense, getting a prismatic diamond is progress. There we go. Ring. No good. Whoops. Wrong button. There we go. Alright. Arcane Spark followed by Prismatic Diamond. Done. Um, prismatic Diamond. Booyah. So, uh, what is so good about this Prismatic Diamond that we just spent half an hour getting one? Or, I guess it's probably 20 minutes. Um, what's so good about it? 
You can see there it has health, it absorbs energy from enemy spells, and it has some vitality resistance. But the thing that's really good about it is that it has a circuit breaker built into it. So if you get down low, you go below half health, this will activate, you will get 130 damage absorption. Now this basically reduces every instance of damage that you take by 130. You also get some total damage, um, which just multiply your damage by uh, 110%. Um, so if you did 10 damage before, now you do 11. And then the total speed is nice, but um, not why you get this. All right. And we will talk to him. Okay, also, as long as we're here, I'm just going to do a quick search for Corvin Storm, because I have a feeling... Okay, it's Corvin, not Coravan. I have a feeling there's another one. It's at level 70. Okay. I'm going to open up Forgotten Gods. I'm going to go through and get the Rift. Um... Am I going to just go farm a new weapon? No, we'll do some of Act 2. We'll maybe go get a new weapon at the start of the next episode. Uh, or I may do it in between. Alright, 67. Two more points in there. Uh, cunning, up to 7 points. As long as we're in the area. Let's go ahead and bank all this. Um, I don't have any dynamite. So I need to go back to normal again. Uh, or do I? I do, the best I, can with what I've got. I do not. There we go. Now we're out of Aether Shards, so we can just do a quick search for Shard. And I'll just have three. Why not? The emissary warned. Okay, this should be relatively easy. We'll just beat these guys down. Also, I should point out that I'm pretty sure you can get the level 70 weapons in normal difficulty if you don't want the added... Uh, we'll call it a challenge. I'm pretty sure this place scales with you to level 70. It could be straight up 90 in normal now. I know they changed level scaling, so... It could be that you can just, uh... Go get it in normal. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, why'd you bring me here? I'll speak with them. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. I think I will probably side with Bismil this time. But for now, we'll leave it. Um, I haven't repaired the bridge, so I do need the scrap. Look at me, thinking ahead and everything. Normally I'd run over there, realize I don't have the scrap, turn around, run all the way back, grab the scrap. <laughs> It'd be a whole thing. This time I only halfway did it. Okay, so, we repaired the bridge, and uh, let's go do some quests. Now this time, this time, you definitely do not want to mess up with um, with our good friend Desire Redden. You definitely want him on side, well just always, but especially in Ultimate. Unless you have all the blueprints for all the resistance potions, um, you want him to be friendly. Don't forget, when you kill uh, Shanks there, he has a nice treasure chest at the back here. Alright, we may as well go rescue Steven Skinner, or at least his family. I can't do that yet. Because hey, he wants to burn the house down with everybody in it. That's not okay. Send him back to town. Um, as you notice there, you can just put your mouse at the bottom of the second, or the just above the, the bottom option. So you're on the second bottom option, and just spam click, and you will complete the quest correctly. Alright, these guys are actually a little bit dangerous. I say as I completely destroy them, but just take my word for it, those golem things, if they throw rocks at you and they're somewhat coordinated, you will die very, very quickly. I know I've said that a couple of times now and it hasn't happened, but I don't really want it to happen either. Okay, we do need this other Devotion Shrine in here, so I am going to go and get that. That should get... Um, is that the proc on the crab? I think it is. 
think we're getting the, the crab proc here. And you'll see it active constantly. It is it is really good defensive proc. Um, let's go ahead and just get it. Okay, Aniria Thandris. Don't know what she does, but uh, she's dead now. Okay, devotion point awarded. Do be aware of the goop that I'm standing in. Um, do as I say, not as I do, sort of thing. Um, definitely be aware of that. Okay, yes, we have Mogdragon's Pact. So, Arcane Barry here. Anytime you get hit by anything, uh, this has a chance, one in three, to put a shield on you that blocks poison, vitality, elemental, aether, and chaos damage. 300 doesn't sound like much, but this thing procs constantly. Uh, you get just insane amounts of uh, defenses from having that. Look, it's already triggered. So very easy to trigger. Triggers very often. It's already worn off. That's already back. There you go. So you'll see that pop up and disappear constantly. Um, it's only 300 now, but it gets bigger. That's what she said. So definitely worth getting. Um, any elemental build probably should take that, I think. Uh, it's very good defensively. Okay, Nether Crown. And the reason I'm here is this Exalted Stash. Probably should have just left by now, honestly. Hey, it's a new uh, perdition. Alright, Shorses of Barbaros are more of a physical thing, I think, from memory. Um, yeah, physical damage. Battle Cry is actually really good. Um, the total speed on that is really, really nice. Can I use that? No, not high enough level. I'm going to hang on to those. Um, and is this helmet better than my old one? More armor, 3% less pierce, the same poison and acid. Honestly, yes, it is better. Um, that extra 1% armor doesn't sound like much, but every little bit adds up. Uh, let's keep the add-on. Chuck that back on there. There we go. Lovely. Alright, we're done in here, so let's go ahead and leave. Um, I guess this guy is made out of reputation, so we'll kill him as well. Warborn Visor, so now I can make the entire Warborn set as well. Uh, it is a, another level 75 set, so nothing too fancy. It's not an end game thing, but decent if you were leveling a Death Knight. I think it's a Cadence set actually, so it's probably not that great. Yeah, Cadence. Never mind. Ignore what I just said, it's rubbish. That's just my uh, my Force Wave fanboyism showing there. Um, I'm a strong believer that Force Wave is definitely one of the better leveling skills in the game, and Cadence is very much not. But hey, you can do it. If that's your jam, you do you. Okay. Um, I didn't talk to old mate down the road, did I? That's alright. We'll go this way. We'll kill these two idiots. Sometimes there's three there. And there's another little secret here. Do -do 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 -do. I can't make the, uh, the you've found a secret area noise from Legend of Zelda. But just imagine that I did it correctly there. Should have a soundboard for that. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Let's, uh, let's talk to him. Yes, I'll track down this partner of yours. Um, the ring from killing Isaiah Redden is actually pretty good. But the free, quote-unquote free, um, resistance potions from taking his side are considerably better, in my opinion. So I'm going to join Isaiah Redden, and by join I mean I'm not going to kill him. And, uh, and that'll be fine. We'll get cheap resistance potions for sale in Isaiah's shop when we get to Homestead. And fortunately I didn't click the wrong option by mistake there, so we are good to go. Alright, uh, da, 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 I will help you out absolutely here. Buy my stuff. 
Yeah, I'm sure it's it's all very valuable. There'll be someone along any second now, and they're going to want to buy all of this stuff. So, you know, take all of it, give me full price for it, and just don't answer, uh, don't ask any questions. It's all going to be fine, I promise. You're going to be rich. <laughs> Sucker. All right. As long as we're here, I am going to clear the fog of war over here. There's no shrine here now, but um, this is a spawn point for a shrine. And in ultimate difficulty, you kind of want to go and clear out the shrine locations when you get to them. Says the guy who's walked past multiple of them in this episode. But uh, shh, don't tell anybody. We'll get them later, I promise. Alright, so this mine in ultimate, you can completely skip this mine unless you need uh, Balthazar. Is it Balthazar? I think it's Balthazar. Unless you need his metal, there's literally no point to coming in here. It's pretty much just habit at this point. Um, also, I knew there was going to be some purple loot, so that's that's the real reason why I came in here. What did we get? Um, no. And a <laughs> crossbow. No, 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 no. All right. Not much in the way of Royal Jelly, but hey, one is not too bad. It's not uncommon to come out of here with zero, so getting one is all right. And you know, there's, a, there's a good chance I could get another one up ahead. Okay, there is my good friend, uh, Nicholas Balthazar. You'll note that he's actually doing damage. I mean, not heaps of damage, but it's damage. So I do have my finger on the healing potion. I don't think I'm going to need it, but just in case. The Dawn Shard stuff is pretty good. So the Dawn Shard is elemental. Um, I think I'm going to keep Perdition, but I will hang on to that because this... I mean, it's level 50. Uh, I'm probably not going to use it. The, the level itself is not really relevant. It's the fact that it is level 50 means um, it's almost 20 levels old now, so the armor is going to be obsolete very fast. I don't think it's worth rebalancing all of the um, all of the resistances just to get it. Okay, no shrine here, but that's all right. Um, found a priest there, so kind of had to come and kill him. Let's just go ahead and agree to that, sure. Uh, at this point in the game, your energy problems should have been solved a long time ago, so we definitely don't need the relic from this quest. Um, however, one of the rewards, or the other reward, is reputation with the rovers, which is something that I kind of do want. So we're going to take that. Okay, let's blow this up. And I'm just going to go through, um, cross the bridge into the into the bee den. Do I need the bees? I do. I need some more royal jelly. Let's get rid of these shamblers. Or at least uh, put a hurting in them. I'm going to nearly kill them and then run away. That'll learn them. Okay, Caraprax is down, and the other guy's down. There's a Royal Jelly. Do I have three now, actually? I've only got two. May be able to get another one uh, just before we go in. There's usually huge packs of bees, so there may be, maybe, another, um, another hero bee. It doesn't look like it, though. No. All right, I'm going to have to go in. That's all right. Right, we check these. And if nothing else, the queen at the end will have one, so I can just kill her and get my uh, get my royal jelly that way. But I kind of want to kill everything else as well. All of this stuff is made out of XP, and I do like XP, so we'll just murderize it all. Here we go, here's uh, two more. There's a royal jelly, so we're actually done. And then there's these two, he dropped one, and 
He does not drop one. Uh, but, got what, four now, so we are technically done, which I guess is the best kind of done. But uh, I kill. I, I still want to kill the queen anyway. Something, something regicide. And down she goes. If you are going to fight Rona Prax there, remember that she has a ranged shotgun type attack. So if you're going to fight her, make sure you stay in melee range. Otherwise, she will be the one murdering you. Um, also, there's a usually a body back here of hidden spoils. Um, I don't know where mine was, but I know it wasn't there. Right, we are done here, and we have another Devotion Shrine just around the corner. We'll need one more after this, and I think it's going to be inside Cronley's lair will be the last one I need. Which I'm pretty sure is... Is it just scavenge plating for that one? This is the uh, the Vengeful Wraith one, so if you didn't craft one of those earlier, off you go. <laughs> you gotta craft one now. Arcane Barriers up to three points. Um, so what are we up to now? This started at 300, so we're getting 100 points per level, so if that continues this will be about 2200. Um, and this is obviously one of the better nodes in this constellation. And then the last one is, eh, it's okay. Um, elemental damage is split equally three ways. And then the percent uh, uh, percent elemental damage is added onto lightning, fire, and um, cold percent damage. So that's not that amazing. And then that 162 is split three ways. Which is going to be, what, 54 I think 54 damage for lightning and then 54 cold and 54 fire which is not nothing that's that's definitely not nothing all right before i forget we'll just go back and we'll turn these quests in I believe i did both of them one for blowing up the wall the other one for um here's your talisman and we get 500 rovers rep for that which is a decent chunk there's level 68, another 250 rovers rep. Okay, we've got plus 3 on this. Um, I may put this up to 15, just because more lightning damage, more health. It's all good stuff. Um, do any of you give offensive ability? I think that's going to be in the demo tree, isn't it? Yeah, so flame touched, I will be putting points into this. Even though it's fire damage, I'm mostly here for the offensive ability. Um, I'll probably put one point in temper, just because why not? But the offensive ability there is really nice. Uh, right, we're up to eight points of cunning now. Very, very nice. And let's head back up here. Let's go play, uh, pay Cromley a visit. Um, I guess we've got to kill the troll as well. You there. Anything I can help? There you go, have some royal jelly stuff. Thank you for the blueprint, the ointment. I hope that's not the mana version. And I have a feeling it might be. What were those boots? Nope. I did not mean to buy that back. That was uh, entirely accidental. The misclicks are actually getting kind of annoying, actually. I think it's something to do with how I'm holding the mouse, but anyway. Problem for another time. Alright, so Golgoth, you do want to dodge his big wind-up attack if you can, that one there. It doesn't really matter, you'll probably be fine, but... No reason not to, honestly. Alright, normally I go through the mine entrance here. I'm gonna go this way. Let's go play with Wrecked. I generally avoid these fights on most of my builds just because it's kind of not worth it. And that is still true. But hey, why not, right? 
What's the worst that could happen? I could die. Alright, we got Boris, and we do actually have Wrecked by Protoss here. So, here he comes. Now, this build should be able to stand in his face and blow him up. Should. Okay, we are getting him low. I did use my potion there. I probably didn't need to so much. But, um, there he goes. Now, he had the uh, the Brawler's Distinction there, which is, I think, going to remove... Yeah, 80% less health regen. I don't know if he can apply that to players, though. It's kind of nasty if he can. Absolutely dirty. <laughs> Let's go kill Boris as well. Why not? There we go. Boris, uh, nowhere near as dangerous as Wrecked by Protoss or Ascidian. Easy clap. There we go. So generally speaking, I do advise not going into the pit, just pretty much ever. Um, and if I had fought both of those at the same time, it might have been a, a different story. But um, you can tell when you have a good build, when you have a strong build, you can do stuff like that. Probably shouldn't anyway, but... Like I said, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get super confident on this build and just accidentally kill myself in something stupid. And it could have been that. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and grab the hidden stash around here. So hidden spoils, um, Rifthound leather boots, and some exalted van braces. None of which is something I particularly need. Grab the forge here. And Silas can go as well. Why not? Silas? More like Bilas. Alright, we're done here. Um, I believe I've got enough of the forges, uh, but there are a couple up ahead anyway, so why not? Alright, cross the bridge. And who's going to be here today? There he is. Boomer Slocum. Which is honestly a pretty cool name. I, qu I quite like this one. Okay, we've got the incendiary cask and the incendiary shoulder plates, which is a little bit rare. Um, for the helmet, nope. <laughs> 550 armor is no good. Uh, the shoulders, however, that's a lot of chaos resistance. It's a slight upgrade, actually, in armor. There is no way I can afford to lose that much piercing resistance, though. So, unfortunately, no. I will have to keep my eye out for those, though, because the... Um, if I can get one with some piercing resist on it, I can absolutely swap those over. Alright, let's go see if Cronley's home, um, and also get the final devotion point for this build. Um, I definitely could have got all 49 in normal. I think I'm missing 4 or 5, uh, most of which are going to be, well, one from the Shattered Realm, um, and then there's a couple from the Skeleton Key dungeons that I didn't go into, so... Bastion of Chaos, um, Canyon of the Magi, or Court of the Magi, rather. Uh, what else didn't I grab? I don't know, I'm sure there's more stuff that I didn't grab. Okay, Nadra can die here. Nadra's made out of XP and Reputation. Also loot, although the loot is not so great. Got any helmets for me? Got any hats? Anyone got hats? No? What about you? You look like you might have hats. You got shoulders. Resistant. Oh, lightning and cold. Ouch. That hurts. So if the resistant there had rolled with piercing, I would have worn those. Pack of treacherous means. That would be really nice on another build that I'm working on at the moment. Oh well. Anyway, nice little secret stash there. Let's go get that devotion point. Even the movement skills don't like uh, ramps sometimes. 
All right, here we go. Grab the quest item. Grab this. And that is devotion points done. So, last devotion point. There we go, straight into the crab in the end there. Just a little bit of extra damage, some elemental resistance as well. Um, if you had something you would rather spend those two points on, you could absolutely take that out. For example, this last point here on Altos is a lot of health and some Chaos Res. Arguably that's better. Um, you could also look at some of the first nodes. So like this one here is 25 physique, it's not horrible. Um, Alo up here, if you need resistances, um, this is just a general good um, constellation to take. If you put cleansing waters on something you use relatively regularly, every 10 seconds you can purge any kind of debuffs off of yourself. So this one can be good. Um, I don't really need that, but most of the first point nodes are usually just stats and maybe something else. But most of them are going to be 15 cunning, 15 spirit there. Pierce damage, some armor. Most of them are not amazing. Let's just put it that way. Um, this might actually be better. <laughs> I think I want the damage. I'm going to take the damage. Up to you which ones you want, or which one you want. And honestly, it's not going to make or break the build, no matter which one you take. So don't stress too much about it. The other thing you could do is take both of these last two points out of here. Um, or even, can you take these? No, you need the green. Um, take these last two points out of here, and you can put them into Berserker here for a bunch of health, a little bit of offensive ability, and then some regen, some healing effect increase, physical resist, pierce resist. Um, this is actually probably not a bad idea. Um, pick this one up from Wreck by Protoss, actually. He did this on one of his builds I was looking at. Um, looks pretty good. You do need an axe. Um, we've got a spear, but, you know, the game thinks it's an axe, so that would work as well. I'm going to leave mine as is for now. Um, physical resistance is getting... Uh, how am I going to word this? The amount of physical resistance available to the player is being lowered in the next patch. However, the amount of physical damage that enemies do is also being lowered in the next patch. So overall, it seems like if your build heavily relies on physical resistance at the moment, and you don't have any armor, you may take more damage after this change. If, like the... Uh, so I have a Cold Force Wave Battle Mage, and it has almost nothing for physical resistance, but it has piles of armor, and it's been turned into an absolute tank. The thing just will not die. It's got just shy of 5,000 armor. And that's an average value. Um, and with the, the current test patch, um, it, it tanks like a champion. Even, I think it ends up with like 7 or 8% physical resistance, something like that. And it just doesn't care because it has insane amounts of armor. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, by the time you're watching this, it may actually be past the point where that patch has come out and there's a lot less physical resistance available. So keep that in mind. Don't go all in on physical resistance and neglect other things as I have seen some other builds do. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get my free dynamite. There's also some bees up here. It's worth killing these because, you know, royal jelly. Uh, especially later in Ultimate, you're going to want to craft some potions. And there's a lot of regen potions um, that all require these. And this is a regen build, so definitely want to grab a few extra. Okay, oh, those shoulders. Decent amount of armor. Lightning Sphere proc, I like. Complete lack of resistances, I don't like. I do need to find somewhere to get pierce resistance from that is not those shoulders. And I'm kind of thinking it's going to be augments once I get to that point. Oh, 
But um, those shoulders, they have the curse of the really good item. They have amazing amounts of resistances on them, which means I can't get rid of them because they're too good. Alright, Fate Weaver's leggings, not so much. Shard of Baranoth, again, not so much. We'll have a look at those boots, but I'm kind of expecting them to be no bueno. Blueprint, 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 there they are. Okay, Reckoning, no. Shard of Baranath, also no. Um, we did actually pick up another one of these, so how about that? I think I'm going to keep the, the uh, boots I currently have. Alright, let's go say hi to Cronley. Now, I think he's going to attack me straight away this time because we talked to him in normal. Yeah, he definitely is. I'm not too stressed about attacking him before his first shield, and he'll summon a crystal, and there it is. Once his shield goes down, that's when I'm going to jump on him. There he is. Alright, we just blow him up now. He will put up another shield, probably, just before he dies. Yep, there's his next shield. Um, probably just kill him through it. If you are fighting him like that, Keep in mind, he puts Aether, um, Aether Goop on the floor underneath your feet. If you're standing in seven or eight stacks of that, or three or four, however many he actually manages to put down on the floor, and then you die, or he dies, and you stop leeching, you will die. So, just keep that in mind. As soon as any boss dies, get out of whatever it is you're standing in while you're fighting them. Okay, eat the blueprint. And we're going to run out the back door, make sure to grab the can't do that yet. Uh, the rift gate, because otherwise you're going to have to run through this entire place again, and everything's dead, so probably worth it to exit to the menu at that point to get some fresh things to attack on the way through so you're not bored out of your brain. Alright, out of the cave, we've made it to Twin Falls. Hooray everybody. Let's go ahead and grab this. Now, at this point, I am also going to head back to the old Arcovia Rift because I've got a bunch of quests to turn in. Uh, one of which, that I often forget, is down here. So if you don't scare these guys off, you just get the scrap without paying for it. I'm pretty sure the XP is the same. And you have a whole lot less conversation pie that you have to eat. Before we talk to these guys, I'm going to go talk to Monet in Devil's Crossing. And as long as we're here, let's vendor all this rubbish. Um, Blood Rage's shoulder guards are not horrible, but also not what I'm after. I think we can just sell all of this. Wait, wait. You didn't see anything. <laughs> uh, no. Cronley's rings could be good. Um, you would have to get a very good drop to be better than what I'm using. But it does come with piercing resistance built in. Um, plus three to blood pact is... Eh, kind of who cares. But you could get a good ring from him, so it's worth checking them. Go. Let's go talk to Mornay. Well, you were here. We have to hit them hard and There we go. The nicest of levels, level 69. Uh, do we keep putting points into this? Yeah, I think we do. I think another level in or half a level into that as well. We'll put one more point in cunning. So offensive ability is getting up there. Still not a hundred percent. Um which is not ideal, but it's also not the end of the world. Um, I've still got the slith necklaces there. So, let's head to the white mire and see if I can turn this in. Um, if your rings are rubbish at this point, then this ring is actually pretty good. Uh, you get three good resistances. It's uh, Vitality, Poison, and Elemental, I think. 
as well as you get racial damage against beasts. Um, really, actually pretty good ring. So this is what you're looking at. 22% uh, more damage to beast kin. So if you've got a Kubrakabra problem, put this on, no more problem. Energy regen, energy regen, and three good resistances. Um, that is the equivalent of 111% resistance on this ring. Um, I'm counting the elemental resistance as 60. But um, that's not a bad ring. It's not the best ring in the world, but it's not a bad ring. It is, however, level 70 required, so... Unlucky. Alright, uh, next quest to turn in. We have... we can ignore those. Quaid... I think all of these are going to be at the old Arcovia camp. So I should just have two quests here. Monet sent me, what do you need? Click, 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 click. I've done all of those. Aren't I great? I'm your best friend. Um, found some texts. Farewell. You can pick this quest up if you want. Um, I generally skip this quest. This quest is the Rover's Honored quest. And it's going to send you into two different Chthonic areas to collect items in order to cleanse a shrine, uh, which will let you fight Mogdrogan if you are suicidal. I usually skip this because by now I've already got all of my devotion points, so I don't need the Mogdrogan shrine. And I'm not suicidal, so I don't need the trips into the Chthonic Plains either. Um, up to you if you want to take it. It's a fun quest, um, but there is obviously risk with going into those areas. And uh, on that note, I'm going to end this episode here. So thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And goodbye for now.